time. So I want to show you something about Leonardo. So um, this is the way Leonardo was synthesizing the muscles of the body. Right. So very, very interesting, very, very smart. Um, basically reducing the muscles to strings so that you can visualize the action of the muscle, the direction of the muscles without um, having too much confusion in it. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to um, show you how to um, <clears throat> uh, synthesize the, the muscle, the direction of the muscles, uh, to better understand uh, uh, their form, right? So start drawing, I want to start drawing the uh, head, right? Skeleton of the head and um, the rib cage, because I, I want to deal with some muscle of not not a lot of them, but just to show you uh, how we can visualize in general the muscular forms. Right, that's the head. I'm already dividing the head in thirds because uh, I need some landmarks that are going to be at the lower third. So take the head. I'm gonna use the typical proportion. I'm bringing one head down. It's gonna be outside. Um, at this level, I'm going to have the um, nipple. So the rib cage is going to be about here, right? I think I already discussed the um, typical proportion. So, but quickly, uh, the space between. Um, between the the chin and the jugular fossa, which makes the, the neck, is about one third, right, typically. But usually it's a little bit more than that, right? So um, the posterior portion of the rib cage is gonna be a little bit higher than the anterior portion because um, the, the base of the neck is not horizontal, but it's coming down at an angle like this. So, a sternal jugular fossa, and that's in the back is uh, basically the, the the point where the cervical uh, tract of this uh, of the spine connects with the thoracic point. Right, so that's going to be the seven the point where the seven cervical is. So now here, um, I'm going to keep it clean. Right, here now I'm going to have. Um, the sternum, right? So the sternum, how long is the sternum? Well, it's uh, less than the measure of the head, right? So uh, if I come down, um, or I can also measure it like this. Uh, uh, when you have uh, the measure of one head down from the chin down to here, you go a little bit lower than that, right? And that is going to be the measure of the sternum. So the sternum also, um, the end of the sternum also is corresponding, of course, to the um, top of the costal arch, right? And I don't need much more than that, right? So now, change of angle here. So now I want to position here the uh, clavicle and the head of the humerus. So remember how we can do this, right? Um, I, I come up with the maximum width of the rim cage here and uh, bring out horizontally the top of the sternum. The head of the humerus is going to be here, below, uh, below the clavicle and outside the width of the rib cage. Now, once I find this, I can build over it the clavicle, right, here, like this. That is going to be the clavicle, right? Of course, sometimes the clavicle is goes a little bit higher, a little bit lower, it really depends, but we need uh, to start somewhere, right? So, and anyway, this is really not the method that uh, necessarily was used, do, used during the Renaissance. It has been developed in the century since. Um, this is the structural uh, method that uh, is being uh, widely used um, today. Um, 
and um, and um, basically each instructor has uh, some sort of variation of this uh, method, the structure of method, right? So that's the humerus, right? Um, now the 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 muscle. I'm gonna color. I'm gonna include now the muscle and make them blue over the skeletal structure, right? So I want some landmarks. So this is the the, the jugular fossa, the sternal jugular fossa. I need that, right? The head of the humerus. I need that. Here, um, at this level here, right, very close to the end of the the the, the shoulder, basically, I have a little bump. That little bump is uh, the connection between the clavicle and the acromion, that's being the scapula. Uh, at this point in here, I have a little bump, and that is the coracoid process. The coracoid process comes from the back from the scapula. I need it because muscle will attach in there. So the scapula is going to be here, right? And um, so now I have my... Um, landmarks to the top and you have the sternum the end of the sternum here uh, is at about about at the level of the seventh rib um, one head down here I have about the level of the 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 fifth rib right the fifth rib is going to be about here right here so um, I need this as reference the fifth rib because the pectoralis goes down to the fifth and sixth ribs so um, so let's see now, another landmark that uh, we need is the mastoid process. The mastoid process is uh, um, this one. That's the mastoid process, right? Mastoid means uh, breast-like, you know, mastectomy, uh, mastitis, breast-like form in Latin, okay? So um, why... Uh, why do I want to know where that is? Because the sternocleidal mastoid uh, muscle will go in there. And if this is at the lower third, see that? It's uh, at the, at the um, level of the base of the nose. I do not really see it from the front, just barely a little bit here. So all I need to, to do is to know where the base of the nose is here. And, uh, and then I'm going to bring out uh, this level here at the lower third and the mastoid process is going to be here and here so now let's change color right um, let's do what what Leonardo did right reduce the muscles to basic um, basic forms right so um, sternal cladal mastoideus sternal cladal or clavicle mastoideus right so I'm going to have two lines, one here that go just behind the jawline to the mastoid process, one here, right? I'm going to make it a little bit thicker, like Leonardo did, right? Uh, and then, um, and then, uh, so sternum, right, here, start from the sternum here, cladal, clavicle here, and connects with the, um, the mastoid process, I meaning the sternocleidal mastoid has two um, main segments, muscular segment, they go up like that. Uh, the, now we're going to introduce the trapezius. The trapezius starts from the back of the head, about here, right, and comes about, uh, you know, it's posteriorly halfway down like this, so it's going to be about here, come down like that, and uh, appears here, now it's posterior. here, appears here, right, at the level of the neck here, and it has to go here, and here, and here, right? So, so now I'm going to do this, right, here, one, two, and three, right? So I have, this is the trapezius. Trapezius, of course, is a, a muscle that develops mostly in the posterior part of the body, right? But it is also anterior and comes here to the um, superior margin of the clavicle and uh, uh, the lateral, let's say, third, right? And um, create this beautiful kind of um, fanning out of the form. So now um, let's block in the um, coracobrachialis. So the coracobrachialis is a muscle that goes from the coracoid process 
to the brachii, and it's about halfway down the length of the, the humerus, brachii in Latin means arm, braccio, brachii. Um, from here, it will go down this way like this, right? And I'm going to make it as a thin string, but in reality, it has a body, clearly, right? So they're gonna, I'm going to uh, synthesize all these muscles as string, right? Strings. So uh, I'm not going to put in here the um, pectoralis minor because uh, it might create a little bit too much confusion with all the other fibers that I'm going to put on top, right? But I want to position here the bicep femoris, right? So the bicep femoris has two heads, right? Long and short head. The bicep femoris will start from the short head from here, right? On the coracoid process and come down kind of adjacent to the uh, coracobrachialis. The other head goes over the head of the humerus in here and goes behind the coracoid process, right? Goes behind the coracoid process to, to the superior margin of the glenoid fossa, which is the articular face of the, of the scapula. So we don't see it where it goes. It disappears back in there and, um, and we are okay with that, right? We are okay, we don't see it, so we don't worry about that anymore. So this is now the long head right here, right? And the long head will go down along the arm. I'm not going to show you where it goes all the way, but it goes to the forearm. Uh, I just want to, to kind of give you an idea of um, how we can really synthesize all this muscle, right? But um, at this point in here, the short head and the long head of the bicep will merge and will go down to the um, radius. There is a tuberosity of the radius in there. Um, okay, I think I already covered that in one of the previous uh, videos, right? So that is now the strings, the strings of the uh, short head and long head of the bicep. Okay, so now I want to block in the, over here, the pectoralis, right? So the pectoralis will go from, um, you gotta find, you gotta find the coracoid process here, right? And uh, the pectoralis start from uh, this point in here, right, right next to the coracoid process, right? Because the pectoralis will not go over the coracoid process. So I had to make sure I am on this side here. The deltoid will go over it, but not the pectoralis. So the pectoralis will go from here, right? The lower margin of the clavicle, um, the, lat the, 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 uh, the lateral margin of the sternum, all the way down to the fifth and sixth in here. So now that is the point of origin of the pectoralis, right? So again, I think I already showed you this, but I'm gonna show you again. I want to find out the point of origin, and I did that, and the point of insertion. Insertion is here, right? So now I have a high point and a low point, a high point and a low point, and what I want to do now, I want to connect the um, low point with the high point here, right? and then the high point with the low point here. And that gives me the, the form of the pectoralis, the, the area, the area, let's say more form, the area occupied by the pectoralis muscle. So it's still schematic. So now we want to be more specific and uh, uh, create fibers right here. And then from here, uh, here, right? From here, there. Right. So I'm going to create all these fibers. See that all these fibers um, reduce to thin strings, right? 
that um, synthesize the pectoralis. You notice also one thing how um, this fiber goes under that fiber, this fiber goes under that fiber, and so on, right? So <clears throat> it created sort of a spiraling, right? Spiraling of the form, right? Okay, so now this is the, now I have to raise a little bit because I got too much, too much stuff in there, right? So this is the spiraling form of the pectoralis, and as you can see, uh, if I know this is <clears throat> the seventh rib, that's the fifth, I know that the pectoralis goes down to the fifth, more or less sixth, so I know where it ends, right? That's why I need to know uh, my landmarks. I always insist on the landmarks. They are very important um, structure to memorize, understand, if we want to draw the human figure properly, right? So see how this nice overlapping of the pectoralis in here over the bicep. Now the bicep is under the pectoralis, isn't it? Um, of course, if we had time, we would kind of uh, um, spend a little bit more time on detail, but I, it's not the point. It's I want you to understand the... Um, I'm going to show you um, this idea of synthesizing, synthesizing the forms to uh, um, simple line to have a better idea of the function of the muscle, right? So if I pull the string, I know what happened, right? So now the deltoid, the deltoid muscle will go from this point in here, right? Over the coracoid process here. And it goes down, halfway down the uh, lateral side of the humerus. From here, here, and here, and also posteriorly. But now I only see the anterior portion. So now I'm going to draw that from here down to here, right? From here over now the pectoralis, right? Starting to become a little bit crowded, right? I'm gonna clean it up later. I'm gonna take a quick break and then erase it and then come we come back with them um, with a cleaner uh with a cleaner um drawing here because it's getting very, very busy, right? Um so I could also keep adding muscle, right? I could add that in here. I would probably see the tricep going posteriorly like that, like uh the the long head, it is the lateral head. So um, in here, I could position in here also the scaling muscles. They go down to the first and second rib and uh, to, the, to the side of the cervical uh, vertebrae, creating, so now if I do this um, uh, kind of very schematic rendering, you see how it is much more visible, the pattern created by the muscles is much more much more visible right so this is by the way is going to be one of the topics that i will uh, be dealing with in my next book hopefully to be released in, um, in the fall 2020 and i'm going to go over all these aspects of these patterns of movement so from here i could also block in the um serratus anterior right serratus anterior etc and um, and uh, from here the uh, latissimus dorsi down like this posteriorly right and it goes back to the back of the rib cage here right so you see how um, we can really create a, a different um, mental image of the muscles. Of the uh, of the body, right? So thank you, Leonardo. Right? So um, okay, I'm gonna take a break, clean this up, and then I'm gonna show you um, a cleaner version of this. Okay.